Prom night, 1997. A girl gives birth alone in a toilet stall, kills her baby, then dumps his lifeless body in the trash can. This is the story of Melissa Drexler. 1978 saw the birth of Melissa Ann Drexler, an only child born to Roman Catholic parents. Her father, John, worked as a shipping clerk for an importing company and her mother, Marie, at a local bank. The Drexlers were described as wholesome people who raised their small daughter with love and compassion. Melissa was brought up in Forked River, New Jersey, a small town with a population of just 23,000 at the time. Melissa enjoyed dancing growing up, particularly jazz due to its fast rhythm, but stopped attending classes when she transitioned from middle school to the Lacey Township High School. She began spending her weekends in the company of friends who would describe her as sensitive and supportive, always someone you could rely on to be there, but also tough. Nothing seemed to get Melissa upset. When Melissa was in the 10th grade, her close friend Rebecca introduced her to a boy named John Lewis. He was two years older than Melissa. They liked each other, but it wasn't love at first sight. They began steadily dating, but would often bicker and break off their relationship for a couple of days or sometimes just a couple of hours. Melissa had big dreams that she kept mostly to herself. She desperately wanted to become a fashion designer. She yearned to go to New York after high school, not wanting to be stuck in a place like Lacey. In her senior year, her life was on track. She spent her mornings attending fashion merchandising classes at a nearby vocational technical school, after which she would go to her high school, then she would travel to her boyfriend John's house every afternoon. When he left to start his shift at the local Walmart, she would go home and eat dinner with her parents. Nothing about Melissa's life or routine seemed out of the ordinary until November 1996. She confided in John that her period was late, which caused him to panic, but days later she assured him it was just a false alarm. In the following months, she showed no signs of pregnancy. She stood at 5 feet 7 inches tall and weighed a mere 130 pounds throughout. Just weeks before her prom night, Melissa, her friend Rebecca and Rebecca's mum Lynn went shopping for prom dresses. Lynn stated that Melissa was trying on small sizes and there was no way she looked eight and a half months pregnant. Nobody expected what was to come. June 6th, 1997 was the day of the Lacey Township High School senior prom. Expected to be a happy day for all. Melissa Drexler wore a black v-neck dress she had chosen just weeks earlier and styled her hair up But as she got ready for her prom, she was hiding a dark secret. Her waters had broken just that morning. She ignored it until getting into the car with her boyfriend on prom date, where she complained about having cramps. Upon arriving to the hall, she soon fled to the bathroom. Concerned friends followed Melissa and started to wait outside the toilet stall she had barricaded herself into. To get rid of her peers, she said, Go tell the boys. I'll be right out. Within just 30 minutes, Melissa Drexler delivered a healthy six pound baby boy alive. She cut the umbilical cord on the edge of a metal sanitary waste bin inside the toilet stall. She then took her baby out of the toilet, wrapped a series of garbage bags around him, placed him inside another garbage bag and then threw him into the trash can. Melissa left the bathroom, joined her boyfriend and friends at the table and ate a salad. She would then dance, at least one dance, to Metallica's The Unforgiven. Whoever requested the telling track is unknown. Some theorise that it could have been Drexel herself, but others think it was a message from the universe, predicting the event suddenly about to unfold in her world. Some students at the prom alerted the teachers to an alarming volume of blood in the women's bathroom. Maintenance workers on the scene responded to clean up the mess, where one woman found the weight of a trash bin outside to be suspicious. Upon looking inside, she found the body of a baby boy. 
Immediately, students blame Melissa, realising she had spent an unusually long time in the bathroom. She said she was in the bathroom because she had menstrual cramps and the blood was hers, but it had come from a heavy period and that she knew nothing about the baby. When pressed further, she confessed that she had given birth. Had the maintenance worker not been suspicious about the weight of the trash can, the baby's life and death may have remained a permanent secret. Meanwhile, John Lewis sat at the banquet table alone, awaiting his girlfriend's return from the bathroom, when he was ushered into a room by the school's principal to be informed that his girlfriend had just delivered their baby. What are you talking about? was all John could say, completely unaware of her pregnancy. Emergency services arrived at the prom, attempting to resuscitate the newborn for two hours before pronouncing him dead. Melissa was admitted to the Bayshore Community Hospital, where the staff rang her shocked parents. The Drexels could not believe that their daughter had been carrying a child in secret. Beyond that fateful night, Melissa was tight-lipped to the public about what had happened to her baby, but behind closed doors, she lied to the father of her son, stating that their child had been born dead and she disposed of his body in a panic. Posthumously, she named the baby Christopher Drexler. John would continue to visit Melissa, even up until she was sentenced. Three weeks after her school prom, Melissa made a five-minute appearance in court. Represented by her lawyer, Stephen C. Kerr, she said nothing and was released on a $50,000 property bond. Her lawyer spoke in her favour, saying his client was not guilty. The prosecution revealed that Dr. Peacock, the assistant county medical examiner, had established the cause of death to be asphyxia due to manual strangulation and obstruction of the eternal airway orifices was unable to determine beyond reasonable doubt whether the baby was born alive or dead. We are certain the baby was alive after it was born, Mr. Kay, the state's prosecutor said. When it ceased to be alive, we cannot say. Did the prosecutor refer to the deceased infant as it because he sympathised with the mother? Did he think the baby's death was the result of a momentary lapse of reason displayed in an ordinarily law-abiding young woman? Or did he think her crime was so barbaric that he needed to use distancing language so not to fully face this mother's monstrous actions? Sadly, the prom night fill aside was all too familiar for Mr. K. Christopher Drexler being the 13th newborn victim he had represented, being murdered at parental hands over his 15-year tenure as prosecutor. The medical examiner confirmed that Christopher was born full term and healthy, without any congenital defects or deformities. Due to Melissa's age, her lack of criminal record and what prosecution stated as stress and extreme emotional disturbance at the birth, they ironically declined to seek the death penalty, despite her enacting such fate on her newborn just weeks before. Although the medical examiner found air in the baby's lungs and intestines, he could not prove that wasn't due to the emergency workers' resuscitation efforts and not life after birth. On the 27th of June, 1997, the Drexler family picked up baby Christopher's remains. They hosted a private burial for the baby where only Melissa and her two parents were in attendance. Some students at the Lacey Township High School saddened by his premature death, wore white ribbons in baby Christopher's honour. Yet other students seemed to mock, placing signs that read, insert baby here, above school trash cans. August the 21st, 1998. One year, two months, two weeks, and one day after Melissa gave birth to a healthy baby boy on her senior prom night. Melissa did not stand with a 14-month-old boy in tow, but at a courthouse entering into a plea agreement with the state of New Jersey for her child's murder. The prosecution agreed to water down the charges of first-degree murder to aggravated manslaughter, to which Drexler agreed to plead guilty to. Melissa said, I knew I was pregnant. 
I concealed the pregnancy from everyone. On the morning of the prom, my water broke. While I was in the car on the way to prom, I began to have cramps. I went to the prom and I went into the bathroom and delivered the baby. The baby was born alive. I knowingly took the baby out of the toilet and wrapped a series of garbage bags around the baby. I then placed the baby in another garbage bag, knotted it closed and threw it in the trash can. I was aware of what I was doing at the time when I placed the baby in the bag and I was further aware that what I did would most certainly result in the death of the baby. Prosecution agreed to the bargain because they thought that proving a live birth at trial would have been a gamble that could have seen this murderous woman walk free. Aggravated manslaughter carries a 10 to 30 year sentence. The judge overseeing the case sentenced Melissa to 15 years. Upon hearing this news, John Lewis cried at his girlfriend's fate. Had her baby been born just three days later, she would have been subject to new state law requiring her to serve a minimum of 80% of her sentence. But because of the dates, she avoided such punishments. In November 2001, at 23 years old, Melissa was released from prison. She was described as being a model prisoner during her time, and her lawyer stated that she was able to take fashion courses whilst incarcerated. She served just three years of her 15-year sentence, and upon release, went to live with her parents. She has never spoken publicly about the case and continues to keep a low profile. Her son's death inspired the Nickelback song, Throw Yourself Away, and the Family Guy episode, Prom Night Dumpster Baby. According to an article published by Radar Online, as of 2018, Melissa is a married mother of two, and although no longer with John Lewis, she is still seen to be in touch with him. Today, Melissa is 41 years old, and if Christopher was still alive, he would be 23 years old. Christopher Drexler was born on the 6th of June, 1997. All of the world he experienced was moments inside a bathroom stall, a terrifying hand belonging to his own mother and a garbage bag inside a trash can. May he rest in peace.